I just want to say real quickly, since this is Caris Bible College, I want to thank Andrew and Jamie Womack for having us here. Praise yeah. God. We love Caris Bible College. We love Andrew yeah. Womack Ministries. As it's already been said, we, we worked for Andrew for over 10 years in this ministry, and uh, we were at Caris Bible College over 16 years ago now. Mm -hmm. We started Caris Bible College and graduated, and now our kids are graduated, or Josh has, and our son-in-law has, and we love Caris. Amen. We're multi-generational now. Multi-generational. You know, our parents went to Caris as yeah. well, so they went after us. So, so anyway, but they, that was type of weird. Three having generations. Three generations. Of Caris. So, anyway, uh, we love Caris Bible College. If you're thinking about joining Caris, you need to. If you're in Caris, then quitting is not an option, just so you know. I had someone once when I was on staff here say to me, Ashley, the Lord told me to quit Caris early. I said, No, he didn't. He said, How dare you say that? I said, It's true. I said, I, I just know God well enough to know. Even if it wasn't technically His will for you to be here, now you're here, He's going to see it through to the end. That's what He does. So, don't take, you know, take quitting off the table. Don't think about giving up. You can make it through. And um, you'll, you'll be blessed if you make it through. And I actually think three years is, is the goal, praise Come the Lord. On. So there you go. Go for gold. We can tease you with one year, but most people, they're going to do second year. And then if you're doing second year, you might as well do three years. I and know, if you're I, like us, we've hung think, around for like 10 years. I think some people just keep doing all the tracks in the third year program. They're going for like the pension plan or yeah, something. Yeah, we know that. But anyway, so, so yeah. Bible, if you're watching online, check out Caris Bible College. If you're here and you haven't uh, registered, register. And if you have registered, congratulations. You are part yeah. of a movement that is literally, well, it's not literally, but it's changing the world. It's turning the world right side up, amen for Jesus so good job do we have anyone Caris. here that started in in is it January you did you did awesome and awesome congratulations so, so you're, you're awesome. kind of new congratulations finding your awesome. feet that's great well we love Caris praise the Lord and we love Andrew and Jamie yeah. so this is my wife Carly Terra Dez you're gonna have fun she's the co-founder of Terra Dez Ministries the global church family and all the things worldwide if you didn't know I'll speak like a fool for real quick we left full-time employment like a, Ministries. what did you say like a fool oh. I pity the fool Pity the fool. I pity the fool. That's why they call him Mr. T. The Apostle Paul pity said the fool. That. The Apostle Paul said, I speak, Some of you are going to get that later. I speak like a fool now. I speak like a fool because lest you think I'm boasting, I'm boasting on the Lord. We left here in 2017 working for full time for Andrew Wright Ministries and launched out in our own ministry with no money in the bank, Literally, no followers, no, no followers. And yeah. today, praise God, God has had us do events all around the world. We see hundreds of people's lives changed. Yeah. We're on uh, television around the world, Daystar, PTL, yeah, awesome. Gospel Truth TV, TBN. Um, we have our own property just down the road that we paid cash for. There's our ministry headquarters. So we've been blessed, praise God. God's yeah. been good to us. God has been Amen. Good to and us. Us. it's the word of God put into practice. So we love you. Appreciate you. Amen. Carly, have fun. Thank you. You're going to be blessed with my wife, Carly Terides. Amen. Man, it is always an honor to be back home at healing school. You know, I can't remember how many years healing school has been going now, but a bunch. I mean, we've, we've gotten a bit older since we started it, right? It's over 10 years now, so... Uh, but here we are. And you know what? It blesses me for, for the students that are here this week. You've got to be like the radical ones to come to school on spring break. You, yeah, right? You're the, like the crazy up for Jesus crowd, aren't you? I can tell you've been all quiet back there trying to slide in. But I know I've got your number. I know what you're like. You're the wild ones, right? You know, I love Clay's testimony because actually today, you know, he was mentioning that that, that, that when we've been healed of something, it becomes like a weapon. So today, I'm going to be talking about weaponizing our faith. Weaponizing our faith. How, do, how does faith become a weapon? This is, you know, this is a God setup, right? You know, we have the faith of the Son of God on the inside of us. We, don't no, we do not lack in the department in the realm of faith. And this is a surprise sometimes to people. I minister to a lot of people all over the world, and this is a common thing that we run into. People say, I'm just struggling. I know what the Word of God says, but I'm struggling to receive His promise of healing. I just don't have enough faith. I just, I just can't seem to get it. I don't know if my, my receiver's broken. You know, I'm defective in some way. Everyone else seems to hear the Word and get healed, and I just don't, I, it just passes me by. And they're, just, they're in a place of frustration. And I know many of us, if we were to have a show of hands, we'd say, you know, I can relate to that. That sounds like something that I'm going through. But one of, the, one of the lies that the enemy would love for us to believe is that we don't have enough faith on the inside of us. It's not true. How many of you in here have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Okay, if you haven't, we can make sure of that at the end. Okay, because you, you know, there's no point. We can pray for you. And you can feel better, but then you're going to spend eternity in hell. That doesn't make any sense, right? We don't want to make you comfortable till you get there, okay? So there, there's something bigger than healing for offer today, and that is eternal salvation. But the fact is, the minute that we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we receive the healer on the inside of us, the healer. 
So everywhere we go, if I go over here, Jesus goes with me, right? Still got the healer, didn't leave him behind. He's still right here. If I come back this way, you know what? He's still with me. He doesn't leave me. He doesn't forsake me. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not dependent on me. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what I say. It, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't even matter what I think. The moment that I receive Jesus, the moment I extended faith and put, or you could say, trust and confidence in his word, he was faithful to come and reside and abide within me. And that's true for every believer. So if we've got the healer, if we've got Jesus living on the inside of us, in the, you know, in, in the, in the sense of the Holy Spirit, you know, we're a temple of the Holy Ghost. I said, we are a temple of the Holy Ghost, right? We, be we became new. We became spiritually alive the moment that we received Christ. Now, if we have the healer on the inside of us, it doesn't really make sense that healing has a part of us, that, or rather that sickness has a part of us, does it? It's kind of contrary to who we really are. The challenge comes when we don't really understand that we're actually more than just one part we see ourselves as one part. We see ourselves in the flesh. When I look at you, I don't see you in the spirit. I see you in the flesh, right? But we're more than one part. We're spirit, soul, and body. Three parts, it says in Thessalonians. And the moment that we receive Christ, we became spiritually alive. The spirit part of us on the inside of us is the part where Jesus lives that you can't see on the outside, right? And this is really important because once we come to understand this, we're not going to wonder whether we have enough faith again. We're going to know on the inside of us, listen, I couldn't get any more faith if I tried. I'm locked and loaded. If I've got Jesus, I've got more than enough faith, more than enough faith to raise the dead, to heal the sick or to cast out any demon in hell, right? More than enough faith. The challenge is, what are we doing with what we have? What are we doing? What are we, are we using what the, the faith that's on the inside of us? You know, if we start to walk in what Jesus has, has um, paid for us to have, we'll start to see some things change. I want to look at this. This is in Colossians. So you should have your Bible, your Bible with you because you're in a Bible school, right? The hint is in the title, okay? But if you don't, then you can, you've probably got a phone and there's lots of Bibles available to you. Okay, we're going to go here to Colossians chapter 2, and I want to uh, just jump in here. Uh, we're going to start in verse 6. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. It's talking about the fullness of our life in Christ. This is important we understand this. So it says, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, who's received Christ Jesus the Lord? Okay, it says, so walk in him. So walk in him. So Here's the challenge with the gospel of grace that some of us have received. We think, well, you know what? Jesus has done his, you know, Jesus has done everything. I believe in the finished work of the cross. Therefore, don't, don't ask me to do anything because it's all already been done. No, Jesus' part's been done. Yours hasn't. Jesus' part, no, don't, don't get this wrong. Jesus' part was done. He did all his part on the cross. It is the finished work of Christ Jesus. His atonement was the payment for your healing. It was the payment for your salvation. It was the payment for your deliverance, for your forgiveness, for your freedom. It was the payment for all of the promises that God says are yes and amen in Christ. Right? And when he'd done his part, what did he do? He sat down. Right? He says he sat down. But for us, it doesn't mean that we have, that, that there's nothing for us to do. You know what? I believed on Jesus. That's it. I don't do anything else. Money's just going to rain from heaven. Provision's just going to rain from heaven. He healing's just going to flow through my body. And I'm just going to walk through it. And I'm, you, I'm never going to have a care in the world. How many of you could stand and testify that that is your experience? It's not. It's just not how it is, right? Because we're in this world. Have you noticed? We're still in this world right? We, still, we, we haven't made it to heaven yet. Once we get to heaven, we can sit down. It's going to be awesome, right? But in this world, we are God's A plan. He doesn't have a backup crew if we don't make it, right? He doesn't have people waiting in the wings like a whole other children of Israel group somewhere, hidden somewhere on another planet. That's not true. That's, that's the stuff movies are made of. We are God's A plan in this world, and we have a job to do. 
We have a mission. That's why, you know, many times in the gospel, it talks about the great co-mission. Do you remember that? When Jesus left and he went to heaven and he, 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 just right before he went to heaven, he, he, he told his disciples, I have commissioned you. We have a co-mission. You're, I, I'm working with you, but you're on the earth. You're gonna be my hands. You're gonna be my feet. You're gonna go into all the world. You're gonna heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. You're gonna preach, teach, baptize, deliver people in my name. Do you remember that? Yeah. Right? So it means just because, you know, I believe in the gospel of grace, it is a finished work. Hallelujah, amen. But let's not be lazy with our grace. This is really important that we get this because not only does it affect other people, it affects us. It affects how we approach the gospel in its entirety. So it says here, so you've received Christ Jesus. Now the fun begins, right? This is the beginning of the journey. He says, so walk in him. So here is our part. It's not the hard part. Jesus did the hard part. Hallelujah. Okay. But there is a part for us to play, and that is to walk with him in this life, in the power and the authority that he has bestowed upon us, and to appropriate it in the earth today, and to appropriate in our, even in our own bodies today. So, there, the, so we, have a, we have a commission with him. He says, so walk in him, rooted and built in him, and established in the faith. So we have the faith of Jesus, but that faith needs to become established. You know, um, Abraham put it this way, it needs to become, your heart needs to become fully persuaded, right? Fully persuaded. Because I don't know if you've realized, unless you live in a bubble, but in this world, you have a lot of people that are, that are pulling on your attention. A lot of opinions out there that are trying to convince you one way or the other. Lots of uh, potential distractions. You know, symptoms in your own body can be a huge distraction, you, you know, that some, some things happen organically. Some things happen through, you know, just incidences of life. Something happen, some things happen to us through literally physical demonic attacks of the enemy. But all of these things are trying to get us distracted so that we will never establish the faith that the enemy knows is on the inside of us. You see, he could not stop you getting saved. If he could have, he would have. He's just not that smart. Let's not give him that credit, Right? But if he can convince you out of the faith that he knows is on the inside of you or distract you to a point where you never become established, rooted, firmly grounded in that faith, man, you'll walk as poor and as defeated and as sick and as depressed through this life as anyone else that wasn't a believer. He wants to try to inoculate you to the power of God that he knows that you possess. Because every day that you wake up, he's like, oh no, they're awake. They live through another night, right? He hates you because he ain't you. That's a fact, right? He wants everything that you have that he will never have. But look at this. Let's go on down. It says, and that has you have been to and abound with thanksgiving. So walk in him. You know, this word, this phrase, so walk in him, in the Amplified, it says, regulate your lives and conduct yourselves in union with him. In the Passion Translation, it says, progress further in your relationship. So here we see that faith, the faith that we already have, that we have the measure of the, of the faith of, of, of Jesus on the inside, with the full measure of Christ. We have like, Peter says we have like precious faith, the same faith that Jesus has we have, because it is Jesus' faith, Right? But it says here, if, if we want to progress um, in our relationship, if we want our faith, that very faith, to become rooted, grounded, and established to a point where we can apply it and it works in whatever area we need to apply it to, to a point where it becomes a weapon, a force against the enemy, that only happens through relationship. That only happens through relationship with Jesus Christ. That only happens with an encounter with the healer. That's quite different from coming to healing school looking for healing, right? Because every, you know what? If you don't have a relationship with the healer, every week you're going to need to come to healing school to get a touch. Every, every week you're, you're, going to, what? you're going to become healing school dependent. That was not the vision of healing school. The vision of healing school was to create Christ-dependent believers so that they can get built up, rooted and grounded, established in their faith so that they could join in the co-mission with the Lord and take what they've learned here outside these four walls. 
That's the whole point of what we do here at Caris Bible College. It's not just a, it's not a bless me club here, right? But here's the, here's the cool thing about this. When we dig into our relationship with Jesus, when we encounter the Lord, the healer on the inside of us, man, it changes us. It changes us. It heals us. It delivers us. It frees us from the bondage of the enemy that's trying to entangle us. And then we don't even have to go and try and talk about him outside of here. Our lives are just the evidence, right? We, our lives become the living testimony. So, so here's, here's, the, here's the, the word here. It says, so lest anyone cheat you. Oh, this is interesting. Or let captivate you through philosophy and vain deceit in the tradition of men and the elementary principles of the world, not after Christ. In other words, he's saying, don't get distracted from the main thing. The main thing is Jesus, amen? For in him lives all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I mean, hang on a second. And you are complete in him? How can we be complete in Christ and yet lacking in the faith department? That's not even scriptural, right? So if that's a lie that you've been believing, you just need to erase that one right now. You've been believing a lie. You are complete in him who is the head of all authority and power. Man, there's so much in that. You could spend a whole you could spend a whole week just studying that one. But this is important, right? We have the faith of Christ in us, but we need to start using what we have so that it becomes established. You know, the more that we dig into our relationship, the more we allow the Lord to love us. It's not a problem with him loving us, it's a problem with us allowing him to love us. We start to see our faith become effective. Galatians 5:6 says that faith works by love, right? We get a revelation of the love of God. Love is the power force of which faith is plugged into. It's by by love that faith becomes effective, by the acknowledgement of every good thing that's in us in Christ Jesus. Man, we're full of the power of God. We're full of the Son of God, the life of God, the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. We're loved. We're complete in Him. We're the head, not the tail. We're above and not beneath. Man, when we start to stir ourselves up in every good thing that Christ has put on the inside of us, guess what? Philemon 1, 6 says that your faith starts to become effective. It starts to get established. It starts to get rooted. It starts to get some legs on it, right? It starts to become formed and molded into a weapon that we use to beat the enemy over the head with. Sounds fun, doesn't it? It's my personal mission every day to give the devil a really bad day, right? And to get to heaven with as many people as I can take with me. That's my personal mission for life, right? I believe that, that that's what the Lord would have us to do. But there are some things. We need to start using what we have. Let's go on over. I want to show you a story here right on over in the book of Exodus. I love the Old Testament. We have to make sure that we read it with a New Testament perspective, okay? So we have a lot more than Moses ever had. Understand that? He did not know that there was going to be a Christ that was going to die from him. He didn't have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of him. He didn't have the power of God that was with him all the time. We have a lot more today than Moses ever had. But let's look at what he did with the little bit that he had. Right? This is important. So we know the life and the story of Moses. Moses was, uh, well, you know what? He was confused for a lot of years. Okay, he was actually a Hebrew child raised in the house of Egypt by Pharaoh's daughter. Um, He was raised to be an Egyptian knowing that he was a Hebrew. And there was a whole drama that went on. Off, he killed a man. He went off on the backside of the desert for 40 years, hiding out. God found him right there in the middle of that. And he says, Moses, you're the perfect candidate. You're just the man I need to go and take my people, the Egyptian, the, the Israelites, out of slavery in Egypt. Isn't that interesting? The very thing that the enemy sent to destroy will be the very thing that God uses to deliver you. Man, that's just like a kick in the teeth for the enemy. I love that. So he sends him back. He sends him back and he says, you know what? Pharaoh's going to fight with you. He's not going to want to let the people go, but I'm going to do mighty signs and wonders, the plagues of Egypt. I'm going to show myself strong through you. And eventually, if you're not, Pharaoh's going to let you go. You and the million people I've sent you to deliver. This wasn't a small task, right? And uh, Moses was a little apprehensive about it at first. You know, you can read this in Exodus chapter 3. He was a little bit apprehensive. Anyone ever felt a little bit apprehensive when they see the plan of God for their lives? Like, do you want to pick someone else, maybe? You know, sometimes, you know, I wouldn't pick me. You know, ever thought that? God, I don't know why you're picking me to do this. I wouldn't pick me, right? But God sees in you things that you don't see in you. 
He sees you in your full potentials. When he sees you, he looks past the problems. He looks past the failure. He looks past the inadequacies. He looks past all the things you don't think you can do. He says, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen? So here's Moses. He goes back. Now, he eventually gets with the program. The plagues happen, and off they go. Into the, into the wilderness, on the way to the promised land. They get to the Red Sea, and by this time, the Pharaoh's changed his mind again, and all of the Egyptian army are following in hot pursuit. But know what? Moses, through this time, there's some things on the inside of Moses. Moses has grown up. He's grown up. His faith has started to become established. He's been with God on this journey, and he knows that he can trust God. He knows that God is faithful. He knows even when it seems like something is completely impossible, God is not going to break his word. When God makes a promise, he's a promise keeper, not a promise breaker. So he knows, he, he knows that God is faithful. He's, he's, he, that faith on the inside of him has become established. And Moses has grown up. He's matured. He's become fully persuaded in his heart that God will say exact, and do exactly everything that he says he will. So this challenge, it might be a new challenge for Moses here in Exodus chapter 14. But he knows that God is faithful. And so here they are. They have the Egyptian army behind them. They have the sea in front of them. The people are all upset. And they're saying, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die in the wilderness. This is a moany group of people. It really is, right? I feel for the, I feel for the, for the man here. It says here, um, this is in, in verse 13. But Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you while you hold your peace. This, you know what, if this was a presidential campaign, this would have been like his rally speech, right? I mean, they'd have been like, yeah, I want to vote for this man. Let's go Moses, right? But the Lord said to Moses, so he makes this amazing speech, and he's not the most eloquent of speakers normally, Moses. In fact, he has to have Aaron help him, right? But he makes this impressive speech, and, and this is what really I find amusing. In verse 15, the Lord says to Moses, after he's made this speech in front of all of the people, why would you cry out to me, Moses? He says, why don't you speak to the children of Israel so that they may go forward? This is not what Moses was expecting. Moses was expecting something to happen without his participation. But God says to him, as for you, lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go forth on dry ground through the midst of the sea. I want you to see here that God wasn't moving until Moses was speaking. God says, why are you speaking to me, Moses? You stretch out your hand. You speak. You move. And I'll back you up. Think about what that means for us today. This is Moses, who doesn't have you know, nearly as much as what we have on the inside of us today. We have the presence of God with us on the inside. We have the power of the Holy Ghost. We have the full armor of God. We have the, I mean, we, we have the, the resurrected Christ. We have dead raising from, we have, um, <laughs> raising from the dead power on the inside of us. Moses didn't have any of that, and yet God said to Moses, don't ask me to do something. I've already given you the power and the authority to do. You do it. You do it. He had to take that faith that was on the inside of him, that trust, that confidence that he developed over, over those years in his relationship with the Lord, and put, really put his, his money where his mouth was, right? He needed to put his, his feet in front of him, and he had an old audience of people standing behind watching what was going to happen. There was a lot at stake here, but God was waiting to back up the words of Moses. How much more so today is God waiting to back up your words? We just need to get with the program. That means that there's a, there's a confession piece of this. There's a, this is the part where it says, so walk in him. This is the part. This is our part. Moses need to, needed to use what God had given him. Now, the end of the story is, you know, he stretched out his hand. He stretched out the rod of God over the water. And sure enough, just as he had said, the waters were held back. And the, they, um, the children of Israel, of, the, of Israel walked through on dry land. Now, it was an amazing victory. Then afterwards, all the water came back in and drowned the Egyptians. It was, it was, it was a sight to behold. 
But Moses in that moment needed to learn how to use or to weaponize his faith. You know, sometimes we think faith is just this airy, fairy little thing. It's out there. It just means that, you know, we put faith. That means that we just got saved. No, no. Your faith is a weapon. Did you know that the sickness on the inside of your body is more scared of the faith that's on the inside of you than you are, than you realize? You know, this is, this is so important that we begin to use what we have. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there. Look at this in Ephesians 6. This is Ephesians 6. We're going to show you how to weaponize faith today. How do we take this amazing power that God has put on the inside of us and turn it into the force into the, and, and, and unleash it on sickness and disease or anything else that we need to? Let's look. It's, it talks about this in Ephesians chapter 6. Now, this is an amazing end or uh, conclusion of the book of Ephesians. Paul just, just unleashes here so many amazing truths. But here in the end, he says something that gets my attention. He says, right at the end in verse 10, he says, Finally, my brethren. In other words, if you study this out, this means if you take away nothing else from what I just said, make sure you get this. Now, that's a pretty big statement for somebody that if you just read through the book of Ephesians, there's a lot of good stuff in there, right? But he says, if you don't get anything else, you need to get this. So pay attention. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says, put on, how do we do this? By putting on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil or the wiles of the devil, not wily coyote, right? He's crafty. He's scheming the wiles of the devil. You know, our fight's not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. It is in verse 13. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day, having done all to stand. This means that if we're going to fight sickness, if we're going to fight disease, if we're going to see those things eradicated, we've got to know how to get dressed in the morning. And the problem is many of us have grown up, and this, this, happens, this happens so often, we get our ticket to salvation. We get our helmet of salvation, right? Our ticket to heaven is what I call it. And we just stop there. We stop progressing. We get saved. Maybe we get filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe we, we start talking in tongues but then we do nothing else. You know you've been given a whole toolkit, a whole armory. Girls, you have accessories, okay? You have accessories, right? We love to accessorize, don't we? Right? We have an accessory for everything. Here you have an accessory, but you know what? You have to put them on. No one's gonna come alongside you and get you dressed in the morning once you're an adult. We're not, we're not gonna do that, right? We're not living in the medieval times when they had dresses, right? We have to dress ourselves. Adults get dressed. That's a very practical word, okay? Get dressed, put your clothes on. But many of us, we have, our, we have on our helmet of salvation, we forget we've got a whole load of armor in the back room that we need to put on. And that makes us vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. If we aren't fully dressed, we're not going to be able to stand up to his attacks. We're not going to be able to stand up to his schemes, his wiles, his devices, his challenges, his distractions, or discern his lies. You know, sickness and diseases of the enemy is absolutely from the pit of hell. It was paid for by Jesus on the cross. But the enemy needs our cooperation in order for that sickness to manifest in our body. Because he has no authority of his own over us as believers. This is really important we understand this. Because once we get born again, we, are not belong, we, are, we do not belong to the, to the enemy any longer. We are possessed by the kingdom of heaven. We are possessed by the possessor of, of heaven and earth, God himself. The, the, the enemy has no rights over you. Absolutely no legal rights over you whatsoever. He doesn't own you. He can't, he can't manipulate you. He can't do anything to you without your cooperation. He needs, and he'll take passivity as permission. This is really important. He'll take your passivity as permission. If you say nothing, he's like, well, thank you very much. I'll just take that as an amen. Right? He will. That's the wiles of the enemy. So we can't be passive in this world. We can't be passive in this battle just because we can't see it. We need to make sure we have our armor on. In the message, um, it puts it a little differently. It says, take all the armor. 
Take, take on all the armor, all the help that you can get and use every weapon that God has issued. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words, it says. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them through your, throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. God's word is an indispensable weapon. This is one way that we learn to weaponize our faith. It has to be grounded of not upon how we feel in the moment, but it has to be grounded upon the Word of God. This is how we begin to weaponize our faith. You know, we have to, we have to make sure that it is grounded. Let the God's Word be our foundation. Let it be the truth against everything else that is measured, including symptoms. You know, there's a whole load in here. And let's read on down. It says, stand therefore, having your waist girded with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod uh, with, with uh, the readiness of the gospel of peace. And above all, so more than anything else, this is what we need to understand, is what it's saying. Taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all of the fiery arrows of the evil one. So faith is the fire extinguisher of the faithful against the fiery darts of the faithless. It's a fire extinguisher against the fiery darts of the faithless. You know, the devil does not know what to do with a faith-filled believer. He just doesn't, he just doesn't have any defense against that. Because his whole, his whole manifesto is rooted on fear and lies and pro- propagating unbelief. But when you're plugged into the life source, when you're living with the love of God on the inside of you, and you've got the faith of God that's working, but being plugged into that, that life source of love, I'm telling you, the devil can't touch that. You can't touch this. MC Hammer was onto something. You can't touch this, Right? So when the enemy comes waving his, his weapons at you, waving his diagnosis and his prognosis and his symptoms, you just <laughs> pity the fool. You can't touch this. I'm a child of the living God. I pity the fool. Who do you think you are coming and bothering me? Right? Faith stands up. Faith says, you, I feel so sorry for you, devil. Is that the best you can give me? Is that all you got? Right? There's an attitude that begins to rise up. Because when we're properly dressed, our defenses are ready. We know we're not, we're not caught sideways. He says, look, we're going to extinguish the fiery arrows of the, of the um, evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So here we see faith is our defense and the word is our weapon. It's a weapon. Faith is like a shield, but the, but the, sword, the word of God is a sword. We need both of those things. We need both of those things. And people of faith are lovers of the word. You don't, you're not going to find somebody that you look at and say, man, they're a faith giant. They, they've got faith down. They know how to walk in faith. They know how to stand against the enemy. You won't find a person like that that also doesn't love the word of God. It is always at the root. And, you know, if you look back in that chapter, there's a whole load of armor there. It says, you know, you've got um, the, 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 your waist girded with truth. You have the breastplate of righteousness. You have the gospel of peace. You have the shield of faith. I mean, you have all these different things. But I want you to see something. It's the belt of truth that starts this thing off. And all of the other weapons of the warfare are hanging off of it. You know, in, um, in Roman times, centurions would fight. And they would get down to their, to their literally to their belt, their loincloth, and they would fight like that. And you, the, 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 the winner of the, uh, the wrestle would be the one that basically took the belt off of the opponent in the, in the wrestling match. Why? Because the belt of truth was the thing that off everything else hung all of the other weapons. If they could get the belt off, they won. If our belt isn't based upon the word of truth, which is the word of God, the weapons of our warfare will have nothing to hang on. Think about that. They're just going to be empty words. We don't have empty words when we have the word of God. We have the sword of spirit. Actually, this is so powerful because this is the very thing that Jesus used, the word of God, to defeat the enemy when, when uh, he took him to the Mount of Temptation. It is written. It is written. You know, the, the enemy knows the, uh, the Bible just as well, or if not better, than you do. But he's terrified that you might use it. The difference is when you start to mix faith with the word of God, it's going to start to profit you something. 
You see, you can sit in church, you can sit in Bible school, you can hear a lot of the Word of God, but is it, you know, the devil doesn't mind you sitting here and listening. He minds what you do with it. He minds what you do with it. Because when you take it and you mix it with faith and you start to use it and apply it and stand upon it, you become dangerous. The faith on the inside of you isn't passive anymore. It becomes a weapon to wield against the enemy. And how do we wield that, en- that, that word? We have to speak it. This is why we, you know, we have these confession cards. We give these confession cards to people because we want to arm you with the word of God. Let's look at this. Jesus um, took such care in this. He showed his disciples how to pray. Let me show you this. Many of us don't get the results that we're looking for because we're praying stupid prayers. Can I say stupid in church? It's too late. Okay? We need to not pray stupid prayers. Stupid prayers are prayers that don't know the will of God. If we're asking God to do something that he's already done, can you imagine that frustration? If God could be frustrated, can you imagine that frustration? (sighs) I've already done it. Son, died, cross, risen again, Bible, martyrs, all of that. You've not got it yet? right? I mean, you know, many of us spend so much time listening to the flesh, our flesh, our symptoms, our body, everything that is going on in the inside of us. Why do we spend so much time listening to our flesh, our body suit? Our body suit is not going to heaven. Why do we place so much value on what our body suit says to us? Right? It, It doesn't even make sense. We need to place more value on what the word of God says to us. Look at this. This is Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. So here he is, he says, um, and they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. This is in Luke chapter 11. It's also in uh, Matthew 6 and um, a, a couple of places here, but we're going to read it in Luke's account, okay? It says, um, Lord, teach us how to pray as John t- taught his disciples. And so Jesus, he said to them, when you pray, say this, because this, he was showing them how to, how to speak the word of God, how to pray an effective prayer, not a stupid prayer, Right? He says, our Father, who, uh, who, I always read it, who, uh, who art in heaven. I don't know. I think that was my, when I was, it was drilled into me as a child. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now, let's just stop here for a moment. To, to hallow be your name, to, ha- to hallow something is to make holy. It's to esteem it or to acknowledge God's name above every other name. Above the name of cancer. Above the name of diabetes. Above the name of whatever you want to put in there, right? We need to hallow God's name above the pain. This is important. Hallowed be your name. We need to make God bigger than the problem that we're dealing with. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. This is important. The word kingdom, it means your power, your dominion, your rule, your authority, and your will is, is, is his pleasure, his desire, or his commandments. You know, this is an interesting phrase. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what Jesus was showing his disciples to do was say, just as it is in heaven, Lord, let it be so on the earth. You know, there's no sickness in heaven, right? There's no sickness there. There's no disease there. There's no pain there. There's no grief there. There's none of those things there. So let your will be done on earth, Lord. Let the pain go. Let the sickness go. Let the grief go. Let the disease go on earth right now as it is in heaven. That's, and he says, let your will. Doesn't that tell you something? Jesus is saying, this is God's will. What's happening in heaven right now is God's will for the earth. He wants earth was always designed to be a mirror image of everything that was happening in heaven. Not completely different. What we see today is not God's will happening on the earth, right? God has called uh, called us to put apart his will and his kingdom on the earth. He needed his disciples, that's, that's us, to participate in his will to see it come on the earth. That is part of the Great Commission. So he says here, look, it's going down here. You know, we need to quit asking God about his will regarding healing. See, if we really understand his will, we don't need to keep asking it. You know, I used to, um, many of us have grown up in religious circumstances. Okay, I grew up in a religious, some religious circumstances. And on the end of every prayer, I'd be like, if it be your will, Lord. You know, I don't pray that way anymore because I know his will. His word is his will. 
If we read the word, people who say, if it be your will, Lord, constantly about the realm of healing, don't really know the word of God. Because do you remember what Jesus says to the leper when he says, if you're willing, you, you, know, uh, you can make me clean? He says, I'm willing, be cleansed. Do you remember that? Directly answered that question. Just because we don't see something doesn't mean it's not God's will. God's will is for you to be well today. It's for, you to be, it's for you to walk, even more than that, for you to walk in divine health and divine healing in every area of your life. He doesn't want you to be plagued with sickness a moment longer. He wants you to be well. We don't have to ask his will anymore regarding, um, regarding healing. Man, this is, this is so important. He says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive everyone, or, or trespasses, as we forgive everyone who's indebted um, against us. This word give, give us this day. You notice this is talking about relationship. Remember we talked about how do we, how do we weaponize our faith? It has to be rooted in love, it has to be rooted in relationship. You know, there's something about coming every day. He didn't say, give us once and for all and forever, you know, what we need for the moment, and then that's it. No, he says, give us this day our daily bread. Why? He wants you to keep coming back to the throne every day for more. It's daily. He wants a daily relationship with you, right? He doesn't want to see you once a year on, on Christmas or Easter. That's good if that's all you got, but right, he wants daily with you. He's jealous for you. He loves you. He lo He's a parent that likes spending time with their kids. Fancy that. Right? Come on. This is, this is important. So he says this word give is, is didamai. It means to give something to somebody that, already belong, that it already belongs to them. Give, to, give, to get something to somebody that's already theirs. Now think about that, how we ask that for a moment. When we ask God for things, he says he gives. Ask and you shall receive. He gives to us. He's giving, what is he giving to us? He's giving back to us what already belongs to us. Healing already belongs to us. Provision already belongs to us. Deliverance already belongs to us. Forgiveness, deliverance already belongs to us. They, they're ours. So he says, give us this day our daily bread. He says, these things already belong to us. We don't have to come as beggars when we can come as sons and daughters. Amen? Super important. It also means this. It means um, to raise or to come forth. What did, you, what did Jesus say to Lazarus when he came out the grave? Come forth. Come forth, Lazarus. He was giving back to Lazarus what already belonged to him, life, resurrection power, already belonged to him, right? It also means this. It means to deliver, to have power, to receive, but it means to strike with the palm of the hand. You know, when the enemy comes at us with sickness, when he comes at us with disease, when he comes at us with a terrible report, we need to show him the palm of our hand, smack right to the face, right? Talk to the hand because I ain't listening, right? Strike with the palm of the hand. It's too late because I've already been given these promises in Christ Jesus. When we take God at his word, we strike the enemy in the face. So important. And it says, and forgive our trespasses, our sin. Now this, this word forgive it's, it's translated differently in different places, but in this particular occasion, it means to lay aside, to leave, to cause, to expire, or to not discuss anymore. Settled, done, forgotten about, is over. We're not going to talk about this anymore. Man, this is really important. Sometimes we need to change the way that we talk about ourselves. We need to change what we confess about our situation. You know, in Hebrews uh, 10, 23, it says that we should hold fast to our confession of faith. You know, that or profession, it says profession in the King James. Profession and confession mean the same thing. They mean to say the same as. To say the same as what? To say the same as about our situation that Jesus is saying about it. What is Jesus saying about our situation? What is Jesus saying about that doctor's report? What is Jesus saying about the symptoms that are in our body? We need to be saying the same as. Saying the same as, and move away and leave the conversation if it goes in a direction other than the Word of God. Man, this is how we begin to weaponize our faith, to speak out and to confess, and then we possess. You know, there's not possession without confession, right? Somebody needs to get this. If you want to possess something, you have to confess something, you cannot, you cannot possess the promises of God, of God if you have not first confessed Jesus is your Lord and Savior. That's not going to work, right? So confession always precedes possession. You know, a while back, we had a situation 
um, our, our daughter Hannah, um, she had started, now many of you have seen her testimony, but you know, when she was, she was miraculously healed when she was three years old, but when she was, when she was nine years old, clumps of hair started falling out of her head. Like, like big chunks. She'd wake up in the morning, like her pillow would be covered in, in chunks of hair. Now, for a nine-year-old little girl, this is concerning. For a parent, this is concerning, right? She got really self-conscious about it. She, didn't, she wanted to wear ball caps and hats all the time. She didn't want to go and play out in the, in the cul-de-sac with the neighbor kids anymore. It was really bothering her. She tried to cover it up. She, but, you know, and, and we looked into this. This was a hereditary form of alopecia, and there really wasn't anything that the, the doctors could do about that once clumps of hair start falling out. There, there's no follicles left there to grow anymore. So they couldn't help us anyway. And then something on the inside of me says, hang on a minute. You know, the enemy is trying to steal from our little girl. Mama bear. You've messed with mama bear, right? Big mistake. Big mistake. And I remembered that scripture there in Hebrews 10, 23. We need to, we need to hold fast to our confession of faith. Without wavering. So we need to start, we need to, because he who promised is faithful. God cares about every hair that's on your head, every, the smallest part of you. So I was, I'm like, God, you care about our nine-year-old's hair condition. It might not seem like a big deal for anybody else, but it's a big deal to her, and therefore it's a big deal to you. And he said to me, I want you to find all the scriptures on, on hair that you can find and write them out. So that's what we did. We wrote out on, a, on a, big, a big white sheet of paper. We have them somewhere. We took a picture of it. But we had a, all these scriptures that we could find. And, and the Lord showed me that it, Hannah's faith was set that she, you know, she just couldn't imagine. And this would be hard for anybody, you know, to lay a hand on somebody's head and you pray and then hair just shoots right out the head. That's kind of like a hard thing for someone to imagine, Right. And so he said to me, this is how I want you to do it. I want you to, let, to write all of these scriptures out and pray them with Hannah before she goes to bed at night and tell her that don't worry that while she's sleeping, that the miracle's happening, that the hair is growing. And then the first thing to do when she wakes up in the morning, before she cleans her teeth, before she has her breakfast, any of that, is to go and check in the mirror and to look for the hedgehog hairs. That's exactly what the Lord told me. So I explained this to Hannah. You know, I'm gonna, we're going to pray through these scriptures and this word applies to you. And we're going to take this word and we're going to confess this word. And this word, let it be unto your hair according to his word. She's like, amen. And so now what do you need to do in the morning, Hannah? I'm going to go in the, mo in the morning and I'm going to go and I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to check and I'm going to look for the hedgehog hairs. You know those little baby hairs that first start growing through like a hedgehog, right? This is, this is how the language of the Lord Jews. So we did that. In the morning, she gets up, she goes and looks in the mirror. She says, mommy, mommy, I have hedgehog hair. Hallelujah. I'm going to take that hedgehog hair any day, right? Childlike faith. And I'm telling you, if you saw a picture of her now, you'd never know that she ever had alopecia. Within the, by the end of that week, she probably had inch, an inch long growth on her hair. It was miraculous hair growth. And now she has such long, thick hair. Man, that stuff gets everywhere, doesn't it? Right? I mean, she's got a mane like a lion. But here's what we need to do. We need to take the word of God and not just hear it. Not just, I mean, it's good. You know, you let it soak in, listen to it. But if you want to see it, you have to take it and apply it and use it. Like it says in, the, in Ephesians 6. We need to make sure that we put it on. It is a powerful weapon. This isn't just our saving faith. This is the same faith that raised Jesus from the dead. This is the same power that lives on the inside of you to see signs, wonders, and miracles. This is the same power that, that, that heals the sick and raises the dead and casts out every kind of devil living on the inside of you. You know, faith is like a, a stick of dynamite. You could be carrying a stick of dynamite around, right? But that dynamite is going to be completely harmless until you light the fuse. This is what we're going to do right now. We're going to light the fuse. Are you ready? Are you ready? How many people say, I'm locked and loaded? I've got dynamite faith on the inside of me. I'm ready to receive it. Ready to light the fuse. Come on. So here's what we're going to do, right? We're going we're gonna, to um, we're gonna pray and we're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. Because the Lord says that they follow the preaching of the Word of God. It's pretty simple, really. It's really not very much about what we've done, but it's everything about what he's done. So we've believed and we've confessed, 
And we're going to, this is what we do, we stand, okay? I think that's a good thing to, to do right now. Let's stand, shall we? Stand for a moment. Get all the wiggles out. Awesome. Now, the Lord showed me some things before I came here today when I was praying for you this morning. I want you to just raise your hand so I know if you've come to receive healing for yourself. Awesome. Keep your hand up so I know where you are. Come to receive healing for yourself. Just show me where you are. Okay. Now look around. See those hands up? Here's what we're going to do. You're already believers, right? I've got a lot of believers in here, yeah? Okay. Full of the power of God, the dead raising power of God. You got, you're believing believers? Okay. Awesome. I want you to lay hands on somebody that's standing up with their hand. We're not standing up. Put their hand up in the air. There we go. You know what? If you're watching at home, you can lay hands on yourself, right? You've already got a majority. You're already in a great cloud of witnesses. You've got the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost present. So just come into agreement. Lay hands on yourself, okay? Awesome. I don't want anyone to be out on their own there, okay? Perfect. If, if, you, if you need someone, if no one's standing with you, just wave so we know where to direct people. Everyone got someone over here is waving, okay? Someone lay hands on this lady in the purple shirt. Anyone else? Okay, awesome. Yep, you can lay hands in a row if you need to. All right, awesome. Do we have someone that can play keys? Oh, they're playing. They're just really quiet. Perfect. It's not a real person. It's a CD, I think. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Now, if you've got a prayer language, I just want you to start praying out loud in your prayer language. I'm going to pray. I'm just asking you to be the people that lay the hands on, and I'm asking you to, to, to pray in your Holy Ghost, in your Latin, your prayer language. So you can do it right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that your power is here with us everywhere we go. But Lord, I thank you that you have an anointing right here and right now for healing in this place. Lord, I thank you that it's your will to see your sons and your daughters free from this condition that they should live no longer with sickness and disease, not a moment longer. And right now, we command that healing power to flow up through their spirit and out through their flesh in Jesus' name. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Father God, I thank you that your healing power is moving right now. It's moving right now in every one of my brothers and sisters right now, flowing through their hands as an extension of you into the person underneath their hand. Right now, we command that power to flow through them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a, there's a, there's a warmth running down somebody's spine right now. Thank you, Lord. I heard the Lord say he's, he's, there's a reformation happening. No, no, it's a reformation. It's a reformation. I need to say that right. It's a reformation that's happening. He's reforming some things in you. Right now, there's a reforming of some bones. There's bone structure that's being reformed. There's bone spurs that are being removed. I see a pitting in the, in the cartilage and the ends of bones in the joints, a pitting where there's a, there's a disintegration. Right now, the Lord is creating in you strength in, those, in that pitting. There's strength in there. There's cartilage coming back in there. Right now, thank you, Lord. We receive cartilage where there hasn't been. Bone strength, bone density where there hasn't been. Thank you, Lord. I see the, the Lord says that He's re, doing a reshaping. There is a reshaping even of the orbit of the eye, the structure of the eye, and the shape of the eyeball. Thank you. Somebody has had a problem with an eye a socket, the actual, the actual bone structure, the orbit, and then a problem with the, with the shape of one of their eyes is slightly different from the other one. One eye is a slightly different shape to one of the other ones. The Lord is reforming that right now. I see one side where a kidney is really little and the other side where a kidney is full size, where there is a withering of one side and there is a, there is a, there is a full normal, normality on the other side. Right now, we command those organs to be of normal shape and of normal size, right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord for equal ovaries, for e equal testicles, for equal lungs, for eyes, for ears. Thank you, Lord, for symmetry in the body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Right now, there is an equal strength on both sides returning, on both sides returning, hearing in both ears, vision in both eyes in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There's, there's a reshaping of the lining of the intestines. 
and of the lungs on this soft tissue. There is soft tissue the Lord is reforming on the inside where there has been inflammation, bleeding, ulceration of the intestines. Right now we speak life and health over those intestines. Function as you were created to be in Jesus' Name. Thank you, Lord. I see somebody with scarring in the lungs and even fluid, scarring and even fluid in places that it shouldn't be. Right now, we command that scarring to leave, that lining of the lungs to be repaired, breathing to be easy. In Jesus' Name, there's been a cloudiness on your chest x-ray, but right now there's a clarity coming back to that. There's a clarity coming back to that. There's fluid that has pulled in parts of your body uh, where it shouldn't. It's putting pressure on your heart, on your lungs. It's even causing oedema, fluid retention. Your kidneys are struggling with the amount of, of fluid to, to clear that from your body. We command that fluid to be removed right now in places where it shouldn't be, to be removed right now. I see a weakness in the wall of the bladder, in the muscles, and even um, the signals that go from the bladder to the brain to deal with sensation and emptying right now. You need to be putting your hands up if these things apply to you so I know that you're responding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, we command those muscles, those bladders to be strong, to be functioning, to be um, brightly in your brain, to be rightly interpreting the signals of the bladder in Jesus' Name. Thank you, Lord. Normal function, no more incontinence in Jesus' Name. Thank you, Lord. I see concaves turning to convex. In other words, where there has been indents, they're going to pop right back out again. I don't know what that means, but I think that's to do with some kind of structure in the body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, I just there's a spinal atrophy. An atrophy in the spine. I see somebody that has had a problem. You've had injections into joints. You've had injections into your spine. And it hasn't really resolved the problem. In fact, it's made it worse. Hasn't had any long-term effect on your improvement whatsoever. Right now, the Lord says, I'm going to fix this for you right now. Right now, we command healing into the spine. Healing into the joints. Right now, movement into those joints without pain. We come against that, those rheumatoid. There's somebody that has a type of arthritis that's really an autoimmune disease that's causing it. Right now, we cancel that diagnosis in Jesus' Name. We command full movement in those joints, full movement in the spine, normal space between. Somebody has a, a labial tear in the, in the hip, a tear in the hip, right deep inside the hip. There is a tear, there's a pain in the hip. I think it's on the left side. But anyway, right now, we command healing into those hips in Jesus' Name. We command those hips, those shoulders, those elbows, those joints, those wrists, knees. Thank you, Lord. Move without pain. Move right now. Rotate cuff. Move. Somebody has um, a problem. I keep, seeing, I keep seeing the words bony fingers, but that doesn't make sense because you should have bony fingers. But, but it's like a swollen knuckle. It's like they look particularly bony. I don't know. They look different. And, um, and they, there's a swelling at the knuckle joint right now. It causes pain to just open and close your, your hands in a fist. Right now, the Lord is healing you of that. Thank you, Lord. You know what? You, when, you, when you believe, when you receive, there needs to be some movement. Faith always has some movement. So I want to encourage you to move, to bend, to stretch, to move, to do something that maybe was difficult before. I see a couple of other things the Lord showed me. He says the word spongulitis, spongulitis, whatever that means. The Lord is healing that. And then um, there's, some, there's some specific types of conditions that the Lord spoke to me. One of those was basal cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma. And the other one, um, it sounds a little strange, but if you've got it, you know it. It's, it's, a, it's a histiocytoma. This is a, this is a malignant fibrous kind. The Lord says it's particularly in the fibers of the body. And it's in the soft tissues, in the soft tissues of the body. The Lord is healing that right now. Cancer cannot stay in the body and live. It cannot stay in your body and live. We curse cancer at this very root. It causes cancer, I curse it right now at its root. Shrivel up, die, leave, go back to the pit of hell. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody has had a... A lump in their breast, a lump in their breast, a sensitivity in their armpit. Right now, that's being resolved for you. That's being resolved. You don't need to worry about it anymore. You need to unplug from worry. 
Unplug from worry because it is fueling that thing. Unplug from the worry right now. That doesn't belong to you. It is a lie of the enemy. Somebody has a problem with their, um, with their eye ducts, with the tear ducts in their eyes, not making natural tears anymore. You have to use little, little, little droppy ones in the bottle. Is this you? Right now, put your hands on your eyes right now. Right now, we just, we just command those eye ducts to function in Jesus' name. Eye ducts function right now in Jesus' name. We command tears to flow naturally. Tears to flow naturally. We remove every blockage in the structure of your ducts right now. We command them to function as they were created to be. Thank you. I see a problem with the, the, somebody um, walking on the sides of their feet. It's like when you walk, you don't walk in a normal way. You may have to have orthotics in your shoes, but you walk on the sides of your feet almost. And you, 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 it's like your feet aren't even they aren't straight. They cause you to trip. Right now, we command those feet to be straight and to be level in Jesus' name. Walk straight, walk level, walk sturdy right now. Thank you, Lord. Steadiness of walking. Steadiness of walking. Thank you, Lord. 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 There's, an, there's an issue with the left side of the heart. I see somebody with a, a weakness on the left side of the heart and the way that the blood flows through the heart and the, the way that the heart is structured, it's not pumping as well on the left side than it is on the right side. We command that to be corrected right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. High blood pressure, come down. Someone's had an issue with swallowing. You've had an issue with swallowing. You get impaction. Sometimes it's like food gets stuck in your throat. Right now, the Lord is opening up those, those vessels. He's removing that inflammation. He's removing that allergic reaction. We take authority over that autoimmune response right now. We command that throat to open, that digestion to open right now. Thank you, Lord. Shrogan syndrome, issues of the thyroid gland. Be gone right now. Hot sweats and palpitations, night sweats. Somebody wakes up, you get really, really, really hot at night. Right now, we just command that to stop. We command that sleep apnea to leave you and that blood pressure to come back down to a normal, healthy level. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Somebody, you have an issue with your elbow. It shoots pain down your arm. You have an, and when you grip, it, it, it's painful at the elbow, but it shoots pain down your arm right there. God is healing you at your elbow. He's healing you at your elbow. He's healing you in the nerves right now. Right now. Bend, stretch, grip, lift up something a little heavy maybe. The Lord is healing you even right now in that moment. Thank you. Somebody has a very sensitive eyes. Very sensitive eyes to, to light. Light really bothers your vision. The Lord's correcting that eye condition right now. He's correcting that eye condition right now. Thank you, Lord. We command that vision to be clear and that cross-eyedness to, to stop, the muscles in the eyes to work properly, the macular degeneration to leave. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're working on our behalf that you're doing what you do. There's somebody with an issue with the, the roots of the teeth. The roots of the teeth, like your roots don't go down deep enough. They're not strong enough. Your teeth feel loose. Or their, their roots are or even, they're weak. They don't hold the teeth in and they die. They're painful. You've probably had root canals and things like that. Right now, the roots of the teeth, we command them to be strengthened in Jesus' name. It's firmly rooted, rooted in your gums right now. Thank you, Lord. Somebody even has pain in their jaw right now. Right now, as they open and close, they can feel the pain in the jaw. Go, pain, leave. Pain, leave right now. Fibromyalgia, leave right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody's been told that they have ulcerative chloritis. Ulcerative colitis. It's an intestinal thing. I probably butchered that. Ulcerative colitis. Right now, we cancel that diagnosis. We cancel it in Jesus' name. It doesn't belong to you anymore. It's not who you are. It's not who you are. We take authority over those intestines. And we say, intestines, you, just, you dissolve, digest, and absorb food as you were created to be. As you were created to be. Thank you, Lord. Somebody has um, adenosis. Adenosis, that causes swelling in the in gland. It causes some swelling in, in, your, in your gland, in your lymph nodes. That doesn't belong to you either. It can leave too. 
Thank you. There's somebody, you have a problem with your hearing that's caused by the little bones in your ears are almost crumbling, the tiny bones. And it's causing like a conductive hearing loss. They said it's something to do with age. It's conductive hearing loss. Listen, that doesn't belong to you. You're gonna, you might retire. You don't, you don't need to retire. You just refire. How about that? There's a refireation, right? You, you don't have to grow old and grow sick. It doesn't have to be who you are. Right now, we just command strength in your hearing. Every tone, every pitch, every decibel in Jesus' name. We command that ringing to cease, that weakness to leave right now. Right now, somebody's getting strengthened in their knees. They're feeling a strengthening even in their knees as they stand. A strengthening in their knees as they stand. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we believe and we receive everything that you have given us today. Every part of us, Lord, we receive your healing power in every single part of our body, every single cell, every single muscle, every single nerve, bone, tendon, right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We receive your healing power flowing through every part of us, strengthening every part of us, driving out all sickness, driving out all disease right now. So only health and healing and wholeness remain. That's all that can remain in Jesus' name. We take authority over those things. Those symptoms cannot remain. Those pain, that pain cannot remain. Full range of motion, full movement, full strength, full capacity in every part of us. Every organ functioning as it was created to, 100% in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We believe and we receive. Let's give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good to us. He's such a good God. Now, here I want you to do, now st- stay standing. I want you to check yourself. Check yourself, move, bend, stretch. How many people would say, I felt a tangible difference in my body. There's something different in my body. Just put your hand up where you are. There's, there's people over here. Only put your hand up if you felt a difference in your body. Check yourself real quick. Check yourself and put your hand up if you can feel a difference in your body right now, something different. That's awesome. Keep your hands up so I can see where you are. Look at these hands. I want to see what, now I want you to do something, while you've got your hand up, I want you to do something very important, not for my benefit, but for yours. I want you to come on out and come down here, because I need to meet you, there's something I need to say. Come on out, if you've got your hand up, because you know only the people that have received something tangibly different in their body. Real quick, this is how you keep what you've just received. I would do a disservice if I didn't tell you. Give a round of applause, look at all these people. These are people, you should only be down here if you know something changed when we prayed, you feel a difference from before and afterwards. Look at all these people. Is there anyone else? Anyone else that say, I feel a tangible difference in my body. There is something going on that wasn't going on before. And I know it's God. Come on down. This is like a game show, right? Not really. Okay. Here's the thing. When you leave here, these symptoms are going to try it on. And now we've just taught you, we've been speaking about weaponizing your faith. And I want you to keep what you've received. And the enemy is a liar and he comes only with a counterfeit. He comes with a counterfeit. And so when those symptoms, if they try to come back, you're hanging a minute, I know your name, right? I know your name and you don't belong to me. It's not the thing coming back, it's the counterattack. You understand that? It's the counterattack. It's, the, it's a counterfeit. It's not real. It's just a counterattack. So you just rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And here's how we solidify something. You know, in Revelations 12, 11, it says that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by what Jesus has done, and by their testimony, by what they were prepared to say about what Jesus has done. So when we testify, when we speak out what God has done for us, it immortalizes, it makes it real. Our body needs to hear what you, your body needs to hear what you have to say about it. Your body is going to take directions from you. Your body is listening to your testimony, and it has to respond. Amen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to invite Ashley to come on up here, and we're just going to do something really good. Could you turn around and face the, face the rest of the people turn so they can see your beautiful faces? Turn around, smile at them, and then uh, Ashley's going to give so you So here's what we're going to do. If you're at the front here, it's not for prayer. We're going to have prayer later. This is to testify what the Lord's already done, right? Okay, so I'm going to start right here. I'm going to part the sea here, like the Red Sea. You just, just, just take a step that way. There you go. That's great. Okay, tell me what happened. You can take a seat. Everyone be seated. It'll be great. This is only going to take a few minutes, but I'm telling you, this is powerful, and it solidifies what's happened. We've seen some healings today, and we want to solidify what's happened. So if you're testifying, you can come up here. If you need prayer, you can sit down. We're going to have prayer in a minute. Make up your mind, it's up to you. You can sit down.
You can have a sit down. We're going to have prayer in a minute. That's awesome. Okay, what happened, miss? And here's the thing. No preaching. We're just, going to, we're just going to say what happened before and what happened afterwards. What happened, miss? My knees and my ears. So what, what was wrong with your knees and what was wrong with your ears? Just every now and then they would just seem weak. And I've just been claiming the scripture that my, I will be strong just like Moses was to climb the mountain until the day I... And how are your knees now? They are, yeah. Test them out. Yeah, there you go. Walk up the steps and back. Come on. Woo, woo, woo. Come back Come down on. again. Come on. Come back down again. How'd they feel? Much better. That's awesome. You're healed. Praise God. You're healed. That's Amen. awesome. How about your ears? I'm believing that I will hear acutely. Amen. Ears be healed right now in Jesus' Amen. name. That's the awesome. Praise working. the Lord. Thanks for testifying. That's awesome. Miss, what happened? I was told I had a severely leaky heart valve. and How long for? Um, I found that out late summer and test in January that showed me it really was leaking very badly. And I feel this tingling, prickly feeling in that area. Um, it's on the left uh, side of my heart. Right where the leak is? Yes. So you're healed. Praise God. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. That's awesome. Praise God. What happened? Oh, my, my knee and my hip and my shoulder. Your knee, hip and toes. It's almost head, shoulders, knees and toes. Okay, so what happened? I, well, my, my, e w my hip was very rotated and my leg was shorter. Uh, you know, because the, the knee is off. And then I had a hard time uh, with my shoulder. I have a hard time sleeping because of the pain that comes from this shoulder. Did you have pain before? Was there pain before when you moved it? Could you move it before? Oh, yes, I, I moved. I mean, now, now. Before, before you came to this meeting, how was it? Oh, yeah, I do this. I test it out all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not clicking. The shoulder's not clicking. It was clicking before? And how's your hip and how's your legs? Uh, well, right now they're feeling really good. <laughs> that's because you're healed. Praise God, that's awesome. Praise God, that's awesome. What happened? Um, I've been taking some bone medication for about a year and a half. And the side effects on my right jaw, I mean, just locks. Sometimes when I'm eating. So when she said that, I just received it. And I, it's not in no pain at all. How was it before? It, it was very sore. I mean, when I... The jaw was sore. You saw was joy. And when she said the jaws and the bones and I just open up and there's no pain, no soreness, and it's been constant, so. So no pain at all? No pain at all? Test it out. No. Any pain? No. Hallelujah. Again, Healed. Praise, praise God. God. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? My back pain left. You had back pain? How long do you have back pain for? A lot of years. A lot of years of back pain. And what happened? Was it painful when you came in? Yes. And how is it now? It's gone. Have you tested it out? Have you... Test your back out. Any yeah, pain? Come on. No pain. No pain at all. Yeah, <laughs> praise God. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. What happened? Um, I have what they call trigger finger. I don't know if anybody's ever had it, and I've had many operations. And I was supposed to have an operation last week, couldn't have it. And we were praying, and I mean, I'm moving my hand. So you wasn't able to do that before? Yeah. Show, do something you couldn't do. You couldn't do that. Show, show everyone else. So before this meeting, you couldn't do that. No, it would be just. It would just stick out this finger. It would just stick out. And how's it now? Yeah. You can make a fist. How, when's the last time you could have done that? Uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> so you're healed. Praise God. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. You're healed. You had some Holy Spirit surgery. Come on, right what there. happened? Um, I had for like the last almost two weeks. I've had pain in my uh, root in my tooth, and I, it's been hard to bite down on that side and and even when i chew gum i chew it on my other side but right was it now, painful before you came in yeah it was pulsating and and everything and even just a touch and how's it now right over there, i can chew on it i can put pressure like this and it doesn't hurt anymore you pushed it you give it a good try you even do this and any pain nope. you're healed praise god you're healed. that's awesome <laughs> Love you it. had pain in your armpit i had the pain in my armpit and the enemy kept trying to like you have a growth in there. You have a growth in there. And I just kept rebuking it. And now it's gone. I don't have the pain anymore. Pain's gone. Yeah. Hallelujah. Gone. Healed. Praise God. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Uh, it was something that I've dealt with. My throat. Um, I have um, my esophagus is really, really small. And I have a hard time swallowing. I get choked. And so I have to go periodically to have it stretched. And I've been standing for my healing. And uh, I wasn't even standing for that particular thing a while ago. And when she said throat, I, it was like I had a um, icy 
it was just like I had just breathed really cold air. Right. You could feel it when you breathed. I did. I did. And how's it now? It, I mean, good. <laughs> You're taking big breaths. You feel different? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. <laughs> Praise God. What happened? My eyes. So Your eyes. What happened? Um, my eyes were extremely dry from my previous job. I worked with a lot of chemicals. And just always dry. And then they started to get sensitive to light. So I just, I've been believing, even before she said, um, for my eyes. And now, I mean, they feel like I just put eye drops. No sensitivity to light. Look. So no sensitivity. They feel, they feel, they look, they look good. Right now they feel like I just put eye drops. It's amazing. And you didn't. I mean, they look watery. So your tear ducts are working again. Yeah, that's right. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? When I was born, I was born with scoliosis and a heart murmur. I could feel my back straight and, and the pain go like subside, and I could feel my heart start beating re- like a regular person's heart would. You felt your back, your, your back straighten up. You look pretty straight right now. Yeah, it's amazing. Praise God. You're healed. Hallelujah. That's awesome. Praise God. Thank hey, you, hey, you need to go that's get yourself measured. Right there. Yeah, that's hey, a straight back. Yeah, look at him. Look at this. Thank you, Jesus. That's yeah. a straight back right there. I bet, if you, I bet if you get measured, you'll find you've grown a little bit too. That's right. You've probably grown taller. Yeah. What happened? Um, my nose has just been like, it's hard, it was kind of hard to breathe because the air wasn't really coming out well. Um, I had a surgery a couple years back then. My adenoids came out. And then that really didn't work. And then I just broke pro- proclaiming that the devil, he took my adenoids. And I just proclaimed that I will get them back. Come on. And then... I just can breathe better now. You feel different if you breathe deep breaths through your nose? How does it feel? It feels a lot better. Better than before you came in? Better than before, ever before. Better than ever before. You're breathing better than ever, praise God. You know why? Because Jesus healed you. That's awesome. Deep breath through the nose. Good. Praise God, he's healed. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. That's awesome. What happened? I had a pain in my shoulder. for. Pain in your shoulder. How long for? Um, is it the shoulder I'm squeezing or is it the other shoulder? That's okay. Good job. Okay. Well, you're healed, so it's okay. And um, it was really painful. And it. my mom said it was a knot. And yeah, um, earlier I felt it and I could still feel it. And it was in pain. I can lift my arm. It's gone. Have you felt around? Is there any, any pain? Around and there's no pain. No pain. Hallelujah. Healed. Praise God. Healed shoulder. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Um, I've been praying for my eyes to see because it's hard even to, for me to read my Bible and I looked up to the sign and I can see it. My thumb, my... Uh, Before you came, like when you first came in... I took off my glasses. Okay, so when you first come in, could you read those signs out there, those banners? I mean, I'm, I'm struggling. That's pretty... And you can read them now? Yes, I can. That's Praise awesome. For his mighty acts. Amen? Praise and the Lord. Com- I'm believing for complete healing that even when I read my Bible, I'm going to see it clearly. My knees and my ankles, I broke my ankle and look, it, Come on. And my knees look. Woo! Could you Whoa. do that before? You can hula hoop. They always hurt, even going up and down the stairs. Any pain? Any pain? No, no pain. No pain. Look at that. That's awesome. See right here. I, I've been believing, thanking God. No arthritis has no part of me. Come in on. Jesus' name. You've had an overhaul. Praise God. That's awesome. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. What happened? That was my kid. So. Oh, awesome. Okay. Praise that was God. my kid too. That was cool. Um, I received healing in my gut. And hormones, there's been a lot of issues, and I am believing for complete healing today for that. Amen. I believe you're healed. The power of God's entered your body. You're healed. Praise God. That's awesome. What happened? Well, my left knee, I haven't been able to bend. Your left knee, you haven't been able to bend. How long for? How long? Yeah. For, like, a long, long time. Like, Like, we're talking days, weeks? We're talking about years. Years. You haven't been able to bend your left knee for years. And I can bend it. Does it hurt? Come on. That's a bending knee right there. Come on. That's awesome. Did you bend your knee freely? Could you do that before the meeting? No. Come on. Yeah. Could you do that before the meeting? No, I couldn't Come do on. that. Not, not that far of a bend. I couldn't get, I couldn't get that bend. And uh, healing of a, a perpetual phlegm in my throat. Every time I swallowed, I just could feel the phlegm, you know, and it's just totally gone. It's gone. Praise God, you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. Lord, you're having multiple healings. That's powerful. That's awesome. What happened? Well, I have a fake knee. And since I had the knee replacement, my hip felt, has been feeling like it's been going out. And so I've had a lot of pain there. I have no pain tonight in my Pain's knee. gone. Have you twisted it? Have you tried moving it around? How's it feel? It feels good. Any pain? Yes. Any pain? No pain. No pain. Hallelujah. Healed. That's right. Praise the Lord. I've also been praying because I've been losing a lot of my hair. Mm-hmm. 
And so I'm sure God has healed. That. Amen. The power goes into your body. I believe in every hair follicle as well as your, your hips and your knee. That's awesome. Praise God. Amen. You're healed. Thank you, Jesus. You testify, miss. Amen. What happened? Praise God. I received complete and total healing when uh, I came to healing school two weeks ago. Awesome. And today it was the root uh, of the teeth. Okay. I had root canal since I was little uh, for years and years and years. And now, even though I had pain coming down here. So you had pain on the way here? Yeah. How's the pain now? It's gone. Come God, on. God's healed your teeth. Praise God. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's awesome. Thank praise you. God. Let's give the Lord Hallelujah. some praise. Let's give the Lord That's some awesome. praise. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so did you notice something? I didn't lay hands on anyone. Did you see that? I didn't leave the stage. I didn't lay hands on anyone. This is really important. This is why healing school is different. Because we are demonstrating to you what can happen through the power of God through your own hands. This is so important that we understand that people receive from the laying on of hands. All they did was they listened to a word that was spoken. They caught on to that with their own faith. They said, you know that, that word? Let it be unto me according to that word. They took it on the inside of me with the, you laying on your hands and the power was released through your hands, not through mine. This is, this is important because it means if it can happen in here, can happen out there. Amen? It can happen out there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask the prayer ministers to come on up here. These are our trained our healing school prayer ministers, been through an extensive course of training. These are the experts, right? So if you feel like you would like somebody to have um, agreement with your particular problem, then uh, these, these men and women are trained strong as horseradish, is what Andrew calls them. Um, hopefully they don't smell like horseradish, but strong as horseradish. Anyway, and also if you are not born again, you need to be, you need to receive Jesus. You need to know that if you died tonight that you would wake up in heaven, amen. And if you don't have that assurity, that means you have never received Christ as your Lord and Savior. There is only one peace and that is the Prince of Peace, amen. There's the King of Peace and to walk in divine health and healing, you need to know Him. So I want to encourage you, if you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please come on up here. You can start coming forward right now. You don't have to wait. If you want prayer, you can come on up here. And um, also online, if you're watching online, we have a phone line that you can call in. We have prayer ministers that are waiting to take your call. They'd love to stand with you and agree for your healing. They'd love to lead you in salvation or in the gift of receiving the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, a powerful, powerful gift. There's plenty of help available to you to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. So don't leave without getting the help that you need. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us online for Healing School today and here in the auditorium. And we'll see you again next time at Healing School. Thanks, everybody.